Search chairs and committee members can log into the Talent Management System at www.stonybrook.edu slash TMS to begin their work on seeking candidates for jobs. Sign in with your NetID and NetID password at the single sign-on screen. All departments should work with HR to make sure that search chairs have the correct access to the system. Search chairs as well as committee members are added to the job requisitions as collaborators. Therefore, to find job requisitions you want to work on, you will need to show information for items you collaborate on and then click open on the dashboard under Requisitions. In the Requisitions list, click on the rec you'd like to review. Review the rec by scrolling down. Click the arrows next to the job description to review it prior to looking at applications. If you'd like a hard copy or PDF of the requisition to look at while you review applications, click on the print button on top. Here you can deselect the sections you don't need to look at while reviewing applications, then click print PDF. Once a PDF of the requisition appears, you can print this or move it over to another monitor to save paper. From here, you can view the applicants by clicking on the number of candidates on the requisition. Or, if you are somewhere else in the TMS system, you can always click on Requisitions on top, then Show Requisitions you collaborate on, and then click the number of candidates next to the requisition. The Candidates list is designed to be flexible and provide quick at-a-glance information about each candidate. To organize the many candidates applying for a position, you can click on any column title to sort it. For instance, if you want to see who has the required skills, click the required column title. It sorts in ascending order. Click it twice to see the required skilled candidates at the top of the list. If you want to see who has submitted a completed application, click the Submission Complete column title. If you want to sort by name, click the Candidate column title. Let's take a look at some of the most important columns of the Candidates list. The Submission Completed column tells us who finished their application. Please note that if a candidate does not have a green check mark, they cannot be considered for the pool as they have not completed their application. The next column denotes the ACE candidates. They are the applicants who have the required skills and or preferred assets that were set when the requisition was posted. Candidates who have successfully submitted their application and have a star next to their name are candidates you'd want to review with the search committee. These are the applicants who have successfully answered the pre-screening questions and have met all the required qualifications. Also useful is the internal candidate column this lets you know current employees have applied. Candidates with exclamation points next to their name are candidates who have answered certain questions that need to be looked into further. Any candidates with flags next to their names are either new candidates or candidates with modified information. Click on a candidate's name to review their application and resume. Scroll down to review the candidate's work history, education, and pre-screening answers. Please note, we are no longer asking candidates to provide any information related to their previous salary history or expectations. Due to Executive Order 161, no state agency will be permitted to ask candidates of their previous compensation history. Please be mindful of this as we are no longer permitted to engage in these types of conversations, even during the interview. If you'd like to review the resume or any attachments submitted, click the Attachments tab up top. Before bringing candidates in for an interview, Stony Brook University and Long Island State Veterans Home users must solicit involvement from recruiters for EEO mid-search review. From anywhere in the system, you can click on Requisitions, then Show Requisitions you collaborate on if it's not already selected, Click the rec you want reviewed, and then click More, Request Contribution. Choose your recruiter to send an email notification that you need your mid-search review. When approved, you will receive an email notification from the recruiter. 
If you'd like to set up an interview, you'll need to notify the candidate and also change his status in the TMS system. Let's walk through the steps and status changes a search chair will use. There are several steps a candidate must move through in the TMS system to be hired. In your role as a search chair, you will be updating the candidate's steps and status which documents the evaluation process of the candidate to maintain compliance and best practices. Search chairs will mainly be focusing on the search team step for most of their candidate evaluations. When select candidates have successfully passed the search committee review, the search chair will move each to the hiring manager step to alert the hiring manager that a second interview needs to be arranged. Each step contains statuses that document the evaluation of each candidate. The first step, the search team step, allows the search team to review and select candidates for initial interviews and reject the ones that do not meet the required qualifications. Within the search team step, there are several status options. When the applicant applies, he or she is automatically placed in the to be reviewed status. When the candidate is selected for interview, the search chair will move him or her into the first interview status. A successful candidate can then be moved to under consideration while others are considered. After the committee determines who will be sent to the hiring manager for interviewing, the search chair will move these approved candidates to the past search committee screen status. Finally, to alert the hiring manager that there are successful candidates to interview and to take over the search, the search chair will subsequently move these candidates to the next step, HM interview. This will trigger notification to the hiring manager to start the second interview process, and at this point, the search is handed off to the hiring manager. However, if the candidate is unsuccessful, he or she can be rejected at any point in this process. Let's give it a try. The candidate we are currently reviewing is someone we'd like to interview. Once we have reached out to the candidate and confirmed a time he can come in, we need to change his status and send formal correspondence that will contain when and where the meeting will take place. To do this, go to More Actions, Change Step Status. Check to make sure the status says First Interview and check off Send Correspondence. Then click Save and Continue. Then choose from a list of correspondence templates. If you don't know which template to use, check with your Human Resources Recruiting Department. And please take care when sending correspondence. If sent by mistake, it cannot be retracted. Click Select and then click Next. Then enter the following information. The date the interview will take place, the time, names of the interviewers, the location of the interview, directions on where to park, your name, your title, and your phone number. Click Next when you are finished. Next, review the correspondence. The text in the brackets are system-generated fields that will put the correct information into the correspondence you send. If you need to make changes to the body of the message, click Previous to edit the last screen where you entered the date, time, location, etc. To edit the From and To fields, click the Edit button. When finished, you have two options, Send and Close and send and continue. It is strongly recommended only to use send and close. Why are there two options? Let me clarify. Use send and close to complete this status change and move on to another candidate. Use send and continue to move the candidate into the next status. This option is not recommended. Since we would like to move on to another candidate, we will click on send and close. Then, to go back to the candidate list, click the up arrow in the candidate list navigation. The candidate list now reflects the status change we've made. Now, let's quickly review how to change the status of the next ACE candidate. Click the name to review the application. Click More Actions, Change Step Status. Check that first interview is selected. Click Send Correspondence. Save and Continue. Choose an email template. Click Select to choose a template. Enter the details of the interview. Be sure to click Send and Close since we are done working with this particular candidate. Go back to the Candidates list by clicking on the up arrow. Now we have two candidates ready to interview.
After successfully interviewing the candidates, you may move them through to the next status. Since they have the same status, you may move them at the same time. To do this, hover over each candidate's name and place a check in the box that appears. Then click on More Actions, Change Step Status. The next status under consideration should already be selected. Then click Save and Close. It is not necessary to send correspondence here. After meeting with the search committee and it is agreed the two candidates should move further within the hiring process, you may change their status to Past Search Committee Screen. To do this, select the candidates, click More Actions, Change Step Status. Make sure Past Search Committee Screen is selected and then click Save and Close. It is not necessary to send the candidates correspondence here. It is now documented that the successful candidates have passed the search committee screening. To trigger an alert to the hiring manager to take over, we need to move the candidates to the next step status. Do this by selecting the candidates, then clicking on More, Change Step Status to HM Interview, and make sure Second Interview to be scheduled is selected and then click Save and Close to finish this task. Now that the candidates are in the hiring manager's step, the hiring manager will be alerted that they may set up interviews with the candidates that have passed the initial screening. A search chair should reject all candidates who do not meet the required qualifications since they cannot be considered for the position. Let's review how to reject a candidate. Click on their name. Click on More Actions and then Reject Candidate. Here you will need to send correspondence to communicate our regrets to the candidate. And it is required to select a disposition or reason of the rejection. It is important to select the correct disposition here for reporting purposes. And then click Save and Continue. Select an email template, and again, check with your Human Resources Recruiting Department if you are unsure about which email template to use. Click Next again. Enter your name and title, and then click Next. Click Send and Close when you are finished. To reject multiple candidates at once, they must be in the same status. Check off each candidate you want to move. Click More Actions, Change Step Status, and change the new status to Rejected. Then Send Correspondence and choose a reason. Click Save and Continue. Select a template and then click Next. Enter your name and title and then click Next. Review the correspondence and then click Send and Close when you are finished. Congratulations! You have successfully selected candidates to be passed on to the hiring manager and rejected the ones that didn't have the qualifications required. At any point, if you need to reverse the status, you can do so by selecting a candidate, clicking on More Actions, and then Revert. Then provide a comment as to why and click Save and Close. Please note that you cannot retract any correspondence that was already sent. The candidate is moved back. Repeat these steps as needed to move the candidate to the correct status. To see how a candidate has been moved through the TMS system or to see the correspondence that was sent, click on a candidate's name and then click the History tab. Comments, step status changes, and correspondence sent are all noted here. Please note that all documented comments will be part of the candidate's history, will be discoverable, and cannot be deleted. 
And, as in current practice, all interview notes from the search committee should be retained by the search chair. Some points to remember are, it is important to review only completed submissions. Only these can be considered for the position. You can sort columns by clicking on column titles. This is helpful when you have many applicants to review. It is strongly recommended to use send and close rather than send and continue. Search chairs are responsible for sending formal correspondence for interviews and regrets. While you can revert a candidate's status, you cannot retract correspondence that was sent. Use care when sending correspondence. Comments are discoverable, found in the candidate's history, and cannot be deleted. As in current practice, all interview notes from the search committee should be retained by the search chair. Long Island State Veterans Home and Stony Brook University users should contact the recruiter assigned to the requisition for a mid-search review to ensure fair and equitable searches. Do this prior to bringing in candidates to interview by clicking on More Actions, Request Contribution in the requisition to be reviewed.